As you've probably noticed, uh, the music industry is a degenerate wasteland full of semi-literate drug addicts who spew vulgarity and ugliness all over the culture like a never-ending stream of projectile vomit. For just one example, of course, one of the most talked about songs of the summer called Pound Town has the uh, performer Sexy Red graphically describing her various orifices in the very first lines of the song, and it's all downhill from there. This is what passes for music in modern times, and if you criticize any of it, if you object to any of this filth, no matter how aggressively disgusting, stupid, and morally deranged it is, you are dismissed as a prude. If you do not want these morons and perverts to dump this audible sewage directly into your child's eardrums, then you're nothing more than a fainting church lady clutching your pearls. The media will join in this course, uh, of course, insisting that the music you object to is somehow actually artistically brilliant. Sure, the average hit song these days sounds like it was written in crayon on a piece of toilet paper by an emotionally disturbed adult who still wears Velcro shoes, but you're supposed to love all of it and never criticize any of it or else you are nothing more than a puritanical scold. But there are exceptions to this rule. Every once in a while, the very people who love and defend the most heinous and disgusting music imaginable will encounter a song that they deem offensive. They go from calling everyone else pearl clutchers to clutching their own pearls. Suddenly, they're the ones fanning themselves and fainting. These are always interesting and informative moments, and, and we happen to be experiencing one right now. The song that has provoked the wrath of the sorts of people who regularly celebrate the most demented and hideous and artistically irredeemable music ever made is from country star Jason Aldean, and it's called Try That in a Small Town. This song, we are informed, is deeply offensive. I mean, it's probably the most offensive song that's been made this century based on the reaction. So prepare yourself. Here's a quick sample. Suck a punch somebody on a sidewalk Carjacking old lady at a red light Pull a gun on the owner of a liquor store You think it's cool, act a fool if you like Cuss out a cop, spit in his face Stomp on the flag and light it up Yeah, you think you're tough Well, try that in a small town See how far down the road Around here we take care of our own You cross that line It won't take long for you to find out I recommend you don't Okay, so just to review, Aldine is directing this at those who sucker punch somebody on a sidewalk, carjack an old lady at a red light, or pull a gun on the owner of a liquor store. And warning that if they behave this way in a small town, uh, they won't make it down the road because, as he says... Folks in small towns take care of their own and don't put up with that kind of nonsense. Now, as someone who lived in a town of fewer than 3,000 before moving to Nashville, I can confirm that this is basically how it works in my experience in small towns. Um, I, you know, where, where I lived, I never heard of anyone getting carjacked or sucker punched on a sidewalk. Violent crime was virtually non existent. And this was all not in spite of, but at least partially because. Everybody legally owned multiple firearms. It was certainly not uncommon to hear gunshots coming from your neighbor's property, not because any crime was being committed, but because they were you know, out back doing target practice or in the woods hunting for deer. These were not the sorts of people you wanted to carjack or randomly assault on the sidewalk, which is why that sort of thing rarely, if ever, happened. That's what Jason Aldean was trying to convey in his song, along with conveying that there's a, 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 you know, a sense of community uh, that you can find in a lot of these towns that oftentimes you don't find in the bigger cities, which is also, in my experience, true. But of course, somehow this is all, for some reason, offensive to many people on the left. As mentioned, there has been a, a deafening cry of outrage against this song. Many tweets like this from a woman named Reverend Dr. Jackie Lewis, who you know is insufferable based on the fact that she front loads her name with multiple titles. But she posted, there's no non-racialized way to write a song about lynching. When Jason Aldean sings, sings, see how far you make it down the road, it invokes a very particular legacy. Another viral post agrees, nobody could be shocked by Jason Aldean writing a racist as F song. Him and his skanky wife hang out with Trump and dress their kids in anti-Biden clothing. The song is as sh as he is. Many more posts, you know, where these came from, all of a similar tone and theme. The Daily Beast slammed Aldean with this headline, Jason Aldean catches heat for racist pro-gun lyrics, a modern lynching song. 
The outlet claims that the song is not just a statement of Aldine's personal politics, but a disturbing call to arms, quote unquote. They accuse the singer of, quote, suggesting that he's gearing up for a race war. And by the way, their evidence for that accusation, that he mentions a race war in the song, is uh, they, they quote this lyric from the song. Got a gun that my granddad gave me. They say one day they're going to round up. So the Daily Beast sees a race war in that line somehow. I don't see it, but I guess this is like the leftist version of finding Jesus in a piece of toast. I don't know. You know, as we get deeper into the summer, uh, it's all the more important to think about ways that you can maintain a healthy lifestyle, even if you're very busy. And one of the ways that you can do that is by uh, eating lots of fruits and vegetables. They're a great way to make sure that you're getting essential nutritional ingredients every single day. Through Balance of Nature's advanced cold vacuum process, the vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients of the fruits and vegetables are preserved so you can get that vital nutrition in each capsule. Balance of Nature is a whole food supplement with no additives, no fillers, no extracts, no synthetics, no pesticides, or added sugar. Pure fruits and vegetables are the only things they put in their capsule. It's as simple as that. Balance of Nature sent a bunch of their products down to the studio for my team to try. We all love them. When you're disciplined enough to take care of your health, you reap all the kinds of uh, benefits that are available to you. Your body will thank you for it. For a limited time this summer, when you become a preferred customer at Balance of Nature, they're throwing in a free fruits and vegetables travel set and giving an additional $25 off your first order. Go to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code Walsh for a free travel set and $25 off your first order as a preferred customer. That's balanceofnature.com, promo code Walsh. As you probably know if you watch the show, I'm constantly traveling, uh, being on the road as much as I am. I don't sleep well at night. I know it's because the hotel sheets that I'm at or anywhere I'm staying, they're not as comfortable as my cozy earth sheets at home. Cozy earth sheets are the softest, most luxurious sheets that I have ever owned. My wife and I have their white bamboo sheets on our bed. These uh, bamboo sheets are temperature regulating, helping us sleep like sweet babies, even on hot nights, uh, and even when we have uh, babies of our own that are screaming and crying all night. So maybe without that, we would sleep well. Cozy Earth offers an array of sizes and colors to match your unique style and preferences. Their sheets are made to withstand the test of time. My Cozy Earth sheets get softer and softer with every wash. Don't just take my word for it. They have over 5,000 happy customer reviews on their site. So what are you waiting for? Cozy Earth offers a 100-night guarantee, so there's no harm in trying it. Invest today in a good night's sleep. Right now, you'll save 40% off your next purchase with promo code Walsh at CozyEarth.com. That's promo code Walsh at CozyEarth.com. Many other headlines echoed this sentiment. Perez Hilton published his own screaming headline, Music fans nationwide condemn Jason Aldean's violent new song and awful music video. Big yikes. CNN agreed, noting that the lyrics allegedly evoke lynching and gun violence. Other artists have denounced uh, Jason Aldean. Last night, Sheryl Crow posted this. I'm from a small town. Even people in small towns are sick of violence. There's nothing small town or American about promoting violence. You should know that better than than anyone having survived a mass shooting. This is not American or small town like. It's just lame. CMT, the country music television channel, joined the dog pile by abruptly pulling the music video from their rotation. They didn't give, uh, at this point, an official reason for that decision, but the reason is clear. The backlash eventually prompted a lengthy response from Aldean, who released a statement yesterday with this clarification, quote, Try that in a small town, for me, refers to the feeling of community that I had growing up, where we took care of our neighbors, regardless of differences of background or belief, because they were our neighbors, and that was, ab- that was above any differences. My political views have never been something I've hidden from, and I know that a lot of us in this country in, in this country don't agree on how we get back to a sense of normalcy where we go at least a day without a headline that keeps us up at night. But the desire for it, that's what this song is about. Now, he also stipulates that this song is not about race and does not promote lynching. These stipulations are totally unnecessary because everybody already knows that the accusations are completely absurd and meritless. The people making the accusations especially know it. In fact, if you immediately assume that lyrics condemning carjackings and random assaults are racist and anti-black, then you have revealed something about your own feelings and assumptions about black people. Okay, if somebody says, I, you know, I, I, hate, to, I hate carjackings, and you say, well, what do you got against black people? You've admitted something about yourself. It's like if I said, man, you know, I can't stand the lazy, smelly weirdos. And you said, hey, what's wrong with Mexicans? Somebody in the exchange has made an unflattering statement about Mexicans, and it wasn't me. Something similar is going on with this reaction to try that in a small town. Now, with all that said, I must admit 
that there are there are some gratuitously violent lyrics in Jason Aldean's song. Okay, we didn't play them for you. So it's a little bit offensive, but uh, I mean, listen to these lines from the song. I got some homies with pounds, but we ain't that cool. So I'm thinking about robbery. Got to play this shit smart. It's going to hurt their heart when they find out that it was me that was robbing them. Got to catch him when it's dark. Going to run up on his car. That same one we always be riding in. Ran up to his car, made him grab the wheel. I grabbed his neck like I'm Iron Man. Just do what I say. No, you don't want to die in here. If you reach or you tweak, I'm a fire in here. Wow. Really violent stuff from Jason Aldean. Oh, wait, no, that's not Jason Aldean. I'm sorry. That's that's not Jason Aldean at all. That's one of the top rap songs on YouTube right now from a rapper named King Vaughn. This is actually a posthumous song from the artist who was uh, tragically killed in a gang shooting a few years ago. Before his death, he had been implicated in, in up to 10 different homicides, okay? He's a rap artist with hit songs, including one right now after he died, implicated in 10 homicides. So he was potentially an actual serial killer with a music video that has 10 times the number of views as Jason Aldean's song right now. But Jason Aldean is the problem somehow. He's the one we're worried about. King Vaughn is not a unique case. The rap genre is obviously full of actual violent criminals who openly glorify murder, drug abuse, rape, robbery, all manner of violent crime. They directly call on their fans to engage in this behavior, and their fans respond accordingly. They have particular influence over fatherless inner-city kids who they coax down a road of lawlessness and self-destruction. This is what you get in rap music, which is why every year or sometimes multiple times a year, rappers end up lying in the gutter, bleeding out as the lifestyle they promote comes back to destroy them. Meanwhile, we're still waiting, as far as I know, for the first country artist to be killed in a gang shooting. It doesn't happen because country artists aren't the problem. The problem lies with the genres of music that an automatic and universal pass from the very people pretending to be scandalized by Jason Aldean. A few months ago, Billboard released its list of the top rap songs of 2022. Number one on the list is uh, uh, Glorilla and Hit Kid FNF. Part of that is the song title. Part of it is the name of the rapper. I don't know which is which, but this song also made the best songs overall of 2022 list for the Los Angeles Times NPR, Pitchfork, uh, Time Magazine. It's one of the hits of the previous summer. Went massively viral on YouTube and TikTok. Here's a brief sampling of this artistic masterpiece. Listen. We hopping out that red light, twerking on them headlights. She say she can't come outside today. That means she's scared, right? I be put up in the winter, in the summer, pop out at night, bragging on that top. You better hold his head tight. Anyways, life's great. Still good, still eating cake, wishing that a bitch would. Got my foot up on their necks as a bitch do. On gun. Okay, uh, one of the best songs of the entire year right there, according to NPR and the LA Times. Now, you might argue that the violent themes uh, in that song are less of a concern because the lyrics are so illiterate, stupid, and unintelligible, it's hard to tell exactly what she's even trying to say. That's perhaps the one benefit of having a music scene overrun by mentally disabled idiots with sub-75 IQs. Be that as it may, can anyone seriously argue that try that in a small town is more objectionable than the garbage you just heard? Or any of the garbage just like it? Of course, the crucial difference between try that in a small town and a song like Robberies or FNF, whatever it's called, aside from the fact that Jason Aldean can read above a third grade level, is that in the former case, if the artist is advocating for any form of violence... He's advocating for violence in self-defense or in defense of the innocent against predators. But in your typical rap song, violence is advocated against anybody and everybody, not for the sake of defending yourself or your community, but for the sake of profit or settling settling a score with someone from a rival gang or proving how tough you are, etc. You know, if a rap song mentions carjacking people at red lights or pulling guns on liquor store owners, it'll be because the artist is bragging about doing those things. Aldine condemns those crimes. Rap artists explicitly promote and glorify them. A total indifference to human life, callous, violent amorality. That is what you hear promoted in the kinds of songs that will never, ever, under any circumstance, be criticized by The Daily Beast or CNN or Sheryl Crow or any of those people. So, why does Al Dean get held to a, a standard that is never applied to the most popular rap artists in the world? Well, because Al Dean is white, number one, and conservative, 
And he sings country music. I mean, that's the whole reason. It's as simple as that. They accuse him of racism, but it's their own racism. Their anti-whiteism. Actually, several forms of racism at play here, given all the assumptions that they're making, again, about, about black people by taking his lyrics as racial. That's what's driving this. And their political bigotries as well. That's what's behind all of it. And we all know it. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.